say that we are going to be talking all about throwing your own party using the silhouette and fun goodies that I've grabbed from Michael's. Um, while we wait for people to come in and join the class, where are you guys from? I am actually lucky enough to live pretty close to Silhouette's headquarters, which are in Linden, Utah. So born and raised in Utah, have lived um, a few other fun places across the country, but I love it here. I love my mountains. Where are you guys from? Um, I've got to figure out what I'm doing here, you guys. <laughs> you guys get to be comfortable at home in your pajamas. And I'm here in front of everyone. Okay, let's see. I'm going to try to make this bigger so I can see what you guys are doing. And I can see your faces. This is so wonderful. Um, let's get in the chat. Arizona and Mapleton, Utah. That's pretty close. Nevada. This is so fun. Oh, my God. Peru. Welcome. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and get started. You guys, thanks so much for joining us. This is really fun for me today. Um, my name, like I said, is Amy Robison. I am one of the designers in Silhouette Store. I have been designing and crafting with the Silhouette for probably about nine years, and I love it. I always remember it by when I had my first kid. I stopped working, I stayed home with my twins, and I just like could not get enough of the silhouette and I started designing my own stuff and here we are today. So my favorite thing to, to design using the silhouette products and all the crafty goodies at Michael's, right, um, are parties. I love parties. I love them for the holidays, for just because it's been a week and we haven't had one. So today we are going to go through, we're going to use um, our silhouettes and then like little boxes and fun things to do to show you about how I can, sometimes I'll pull random things from my house or I just love to shop the aisles. Um, this Valentine party, I wasn't even really in a Valentine aisle. I love to just shop everything and see what I can come up with. So this one started in the paper aisle and I found this cute paper. It is Bloom and Wild and it's all of these, you guys, look how fun this is. Okay, so it's all of these fun papers and I was like, well, let's do a wild about you Valentine party. So that's what we're gonna do today. Now, everything I'm doing in this party, you guys can change for any theme that you guys are doing. Um, pattern paper, I think is a great start because you can get a lot of different designs and a lot of different looks and projects for out of just like one pad of paper. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Um, we are going to be making, we're gonna be personalizing like cups, keychains. These were just little wooden drawers. I'm gonna show you that. Maybe we'll take you through the party first so you know what we're going to make. Um, these were actually wooden drawers with a heart and they were just like this natural color and then painted the sides and added a little vinyl on the front, of course. And then we cut out some leaves. I was gonna say feathers, these are not feathers. That would have worked for an animal party though. Um, so you cut out some leaves and how fun is this at a table setting? Uh, each of your little guests, they sit down, they see this fun little box and then bam, they open it up and there's a little toy for them to play with or you can hide other goodies. Maybe there's a treat they pull out or something fun like that. And then it doubles as a party souvenir. Or um, also paper, just your pattern paper from the pack. We've turned it into party hats and leftover yarn because I never finish the yarn projects I start, so I always have leftovers. And now we can make them into pom-poms for our hats. Um, I don't wanna mess up this beautiful display that they've done. But look, still just more pattern paper and we're just cutting it, making it a banner. These little treat boxes. Okay, let's go in and we'll get started of how to do this. So I am going to share my screen with you guys so you can see what I'm doing. Is it working? Nope, because you have to hit share. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, we're gonna start in Silhouette Studio. One of the main reasons I fell in love with the Silhouette is their software. You guys, I normally would design in 
um, Illustrator and coming into here, I was like, oh my gosh, you have just as much designing power in this software and it's free. So even if you don't have a silhouette yet, um, I would recommend going to Silhouette's website, downloading the free software, download their free designs they offer, and just start playing around and getting familiar with it. So to start off, we are going to visit the store. So if you look up here in the top right, you can see store. And we're going to gather all of our free files that we have for the next couple of days with this class. Um, McKenna, are you going to type them in? I can also tell it to you right now. If you guys have a paper and you want to write them down, I'll just go through and tell you the numbers. Um, we're going to be using the Heart Candy Box. This is design number 37311. We have two tropical leaves files. So the first one is 83624. The second one is 83618. The Wild About You Heart is 340041. Then we have the Tumblr Cup wrapper. That is 344313. And our party hat is actually from another cut file that looks like a horse party hat. So that is file 152581. And let me show you how to find these in the Silhouette store. So you can browse by like you have the home page. This will show you all of the newest designs. So you can go ahead and browse through these. Trending designs is usually, um, like right now it's Valentine's because that's what people are making. So if you're looking for some Valentine's stuff, you can scroll through there. Um, there's also like different categories you can search. If you want to search my designs up at the top, there's a button you can push called artist. And luckily, my mom named me Amy, and I'm right at the top. So we have Amy Robinson, and then you can find my designs in here. So this is how you are going to find, you can search through here to find designs, or we can go right up here to the search bar. And we will just put in, let's see, not the tumbler, because these two are easy to see right now. Um, let's do the heart box. So that is 37311. And if we hit search, then you can see it's right here. And all you'll do is tap on it. If you have already purchased, purchased it before, it'll show you that you can download right here. Um, but if you haven't, then you'll just add it to your cart. And you'll go up here to your cart. And then you'll check out. Okay. And then once you've checked out from the store, we're going to come back into our design studio. And I'm going to go over here to library. So next one over from store is the library. And actually, you might see something like this. My files look a little bit, yours are probably all going to be pretty like these ones. But mine, some I've brought over from Silhouette, I mean from Illustrator in the middle of creating files. So some look a little, a little jam-packed <laughs> is what it is. Um, if you go to the bottom, you'll see this synced right here. After you download something, I always just like to sync it and make sure that it's now in my files and I can reach them. So if you find if you download something and you don't see it in your files, hit sync and then check again. Um, I also thought it would be fun if I show you guys how to organize files. So you can see on the left, I've organized. Well, I started to organize <laughs> story of my life. Look, I've organized some haven't quite gotten them all. Um, so Wild About You, that's the name of this party. I've gone through and put all the files that I need in there. But if you are going to make a new folder, you can just hit, now it depends on if you have a Mac or a PC, the buttons will be different. So just start. You can do Control and then right uh, click and you get to get a new folder. Now, if you're on a PC, I'm not sure what it is but probably if you hit option, command, shift, any of those and click, um, right click to get this button. And then you're gonna hit new folder. Now we can name our new folder. We'll just call it party. Okay. And now I have a new folder inside of my wild about you. So you can see Wild About You over here has a new folder. Let's say I just want to put the Valentine stuff in it. All you're going to do is just click and drag it over, okay? And you'll just let go and it'll go into that folder. 
So now you have this one. So if you're up here in your main designs, and let's say, oh, we need these tropical leaves, you can grab them and drag them over to your folder. And you just let go when, once you've hovered over it and it'll put it in there. Now I already had it in there, so it's not going to do it again. This one I'm gonna pull out, I'm gonna put it back in with my main one. And now you can see I have all of these here. Hopefully that tip was helpful for some of you. Um, let's go ahead and open up our cut files and get to work. Okay, we are going to start with the tumbler wrapper. All I did was when I was in the library is I just double clicked on it, okay? And then it brought it into here. I have two because I just showed you twice. Um, I wanna go through and show you guys how to set up your page if you haven't done that already. So if you see on the far right, you have this page icon. We're gonna click that and that is our page setup. And we're gonna be right here on page setup, this far left. I am going to be using a Cameo today. So I make sure my machine is set to Cameo. My cutting mat is 12 by 12. And my media size, my paper I'm going to be using is also 12 by 12. So that will give me this layout right here. If you are using a portrait, then you would just go to the portrait here and you would probably um, want to adjust what size of paper you're using. Also, if you are using a Cameo and you have just eight and a half by 11 paper, regular printer paper size, then letter size, I guess is what it is. You can go like this and then it shows you that that is where you will need to put your smaller paper if you're using a 12 by 12 mat and it all needs to be within this red line, okay? So I'm gonna change my back to 12 by 12 because I am using 12 by 12 paper. And this is the tumbler wrapper. So it's already set it up. Um, this, with this cup, I would make sure, depending on the design of paper you're using, if you're using stripes, you might wanna pay attention to the angle that you're cutting your wrapper at, okay? Um, I'm just gonna use some little animal dots. So it doesn't matter the direction of my paper, um, but that is something you'll want to be mindful of. Okay, so I'm just ripping my paper out of the pad. And now I'm gonna stop sharing to show you guys how to, there we go, we do it. <laughs> I'm gonna show you guys now how to put on the cutting mat. So I have used this cutting mat once before, but let me show you a little trick for a new one. Um, so your cutting mats come with this blue paper. Don't throw this away. This is like your dust protector. So after you're done cutting, you're gonna put this back on, saves it from getting dust on this uh, so that it doesn't become less sticky, but it also saves it from sticking to everything on your desk. So when it's brand new, sometimes they can be overly sticky, especially if you're using a really thin paper. So a trick I have learned, you just get really close with it. Put it on your shirt, your pants, and it just takes a little bit of that lint from your clothes and makes, I mean, it's still sticky, but now if I put on a thin paper, it won't rip it or curl it so much because the tack isn't as strong. Okay, so now we're gonna put our paper on. And I am just going to line this up exactly like it is showing on my screen, okay? With 12 by 12 paper, it's easy because it fills, oh, because it fills the whole thing. If you have the eight and a half by 11, just make sure you're looking at your numbers along this line and that'll tell you where to put your paper on it. Okay, we're just gonna load this into our machine. So there is this little gray line right here and it's kind of a raised ridge, which is a great little guide for you. So you're just gonna put it right at the edge of that, that ridge and you're gonna make sure the front, it's kind of hard to see because this is clear, but these are butted up right against these rollers. If you do need to adjust the width of your rollers, there's this easy lever right here that goes up and down. And you guys, if you're on an older machine, these new ones are so slick with this. You just push this little gray button down and it slides so easy. If you're on an older machine, you'll just take your two hands and rotate it to unlock it. Okay, so we're gonna make sure we've got it all the way at the far end. We've got this leather lever up so that it's locked tight. 
And we're gonna stick our cutting mat in there. Now I just messed with it. <laughs> there we go. You want it to click in there. And I know it's in the right spot because these wheels are gonna go right along this clear edge just outside of my paper. Okay, so once it's butted up against this line and the front rollers, I'm gonna hit this little up arrow and that will load, hold on. <laughs> that will load my machine. Okay, so now it's loaded just where it needs to go. I'm gonna bring you back over to my computer. Sorry, let's hide that. We don't want that in the way for us, right? Okay, so we're back over here and we are going to send this to cut. I guess I could have sent this before I loaded it, but that's okay. Um, over here, we can see how this is a dark red line. This means that it is going to cut out. If you bring this over and it's grayed, and it's showing it's not gonna cut like this, all we need to do is click these buttons, and then look, you have a dark red and it will cut. We're gonna go over here and select the material that we are cutting. This is just regular cardstock. I like to use, always select textured cardstock, even if it's patterned paper. Um, I feel like that is a good weight for this. Also, let's see. Sorry, I have to think for a minute. <laughs> Whoops, there we go. Okay, we got our tools in there. Let's see, it's not, okay. And then we're just gonna stick our blade back in. Is it in there? You guys, you have to connect your machines. <laughs> Are you like, who is this lady? Okay, we are at a new machine. Sorry, I have to move this little zoom window. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's right in my way. So I can't see that I am not connected. Okay, right here. So I'm gonna go down here because I've connected to a few machines. If you have more than one, this is a great tip because I didn't know this the first time I got a second machine. I am going to go up here to Let's see, do you guys see it? Maybe this one, Cameo 4, okay. Looks like it's good to go, is it? Did we find the right one? Is the machine plugged in? <laughs> Only my worst nightmare is happening right now. <laughs> Just kidding, this is totally fine because this is exactly what happens at home. So I'm actually really glad that this happened because now you guys know how to troubleshoot. We're gonna make sure all of the, everything's connected tightly. And then you can see right here, this one that says ready. That's the one I'm going to select. Okay, now I'm gonna move my little zoom window out of the way. And I have done a test cut on this paper before and I know that um, the depth of four is a better one for this paper. It can kind of change. Some paper, you just, never know with paper because they're all planted at different places so i love to do a test cut and if you hit test it just cuts a little triangle in the top left corner and that will show you if your blade is deep enough um, so we're going to go with the four i'm also going to bump up my speed of how fast it cuts because look how simple this shape is if it's a detailed shape i'm going to want it to go nice and slow but because this one is so simple we can do a faster speed. Okay, now that it shows this is ready, we've got all of our settings ready, I'm going to hit send. And we're gonna watch this thing do its magic. So at first, it was tapping down here a couple times. This is the auto blade. And when it taps a few times, it's just adjusting the blade to the correct depth that I've selected. And then it will go ahead and cut. Um, you can tell it's done because it slid all the way back to its starting point. I'm going to just carefully lift a corner and make sure that it did cut through, that my depth is correct. And if it is, I'll now select this button right here. And this down arrow will just unload it. Okay, and we're going to pull it off. We're ready to go. Also, while I'm right here, I need to show you guys something. Um, they have this little storage compartment for your extra blades but my daughter and I use this to pass little secret notes. Nobody else in our family knows that that door opens except for me and her. 
And when I go to work, I'll find little notes from her in there. And it's, it's like one of my favorite things. So I thought I'd show you the secret door. Okay, let's go over here. We're gonna grab our tumbler now. I'm gonna show you, I didn't glue this one on because I wanted to slip off to show you easily. These cups, how stinking cute are these? So these are from Michael's. I found mine up by the register. Um, they had like, these are great for vinyling. We're just gonna use paper because I thought, this is fun. If you're just doing a party for your kids, you can cover them with paper and then slip it off, wash these in the dishwasher, and you can get some new paper for your next party. So you can totally reuse these a couple times. Um, we've embellished them with little keychains. You can do all sorts of things. So for the tumbler, we've got our cup. Um, I love this glue. This actually, I've taken my label off because it got too sticky. I use it all the time. This is the best glue for paper. It's Tombow Mono Liquid Adhesive. And you can find it at Michael's. It is the best. So we are just going to do, actually, I'm going to do it on this back side. We're just going to do a thin line. You don't need a lot of this glue. What I love about it is you don't need a lot. It dries quickly. And should we put this down a little bit so you guys can see what's going on? Um, it dries quickly and it holds really well. So sometimes if you use like a glue stick or even double-sided tape, I've noticed that if your project six sits for a while, it might like pop up, especially if you're using cardstock or thick paper. I just feel like this one holds the best. So I've had projects that I've done a couple years ago and this will still hold, whereas stuff I've done with um, double-sided tape, even if it's just a flat card, you can see that it starts to lift and pop. So this is the Tombow Mono liquid glue. I love it. I haven't used this wide end. I've always just used the narrow end. And this is the one I've been using for years. Okay, so you can see, look, we've already got a little tumbler. It took like two seconds to wrap that around. And our drinks are adorable. Now we're going to do some vinyl on our keychains. So I'm just gonna show you how to set up vinyl to cut, and then I will show you how I rub it on, okay? So let's go back. I'm gonna move this out of the way. If you guys have questions as we go, um, I probably won't see them as I'm talking, but I've got McKenna here and she can shout them to me. I've told her she can interrupt if she can get a word in. I'm a bit of a chatterbox, so. Um, if you guys have questions, ask away. I am more than happy to answer any of your questions you might have. Or also, I think it's great, we were talking before this started, that there's so many different ways to do things with your Silhouette machines, that if you guys, if I'm showing something one way and you have another tip or a great way, share it in the comments and let everybody else see. Because I think um, it's so great when we can share ideas and then, like they might have tried a way I'm doing something and the way you're sharing is something that clicks for them. So feel free to share any tips or ways that you do things in the comments and let's help each other out. Let's get to the vinyl. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen again with you guys so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, I need to make that tiny. Okay, we're gonna go over here back to, this. sorry, I need to move all of these little zoom windows out of the way. Okay, we're gonna go back over here to design. And now I'm gonna go into my library because I've already got all the files I need from the store. So we're gonna go in the library and I'm gonna do wild about you. And this is what we're going to put on our keychain. This is also what is on the front of that little box I showed you at the beginning that holds the little animal and I had all the leaves on it. So I am just going to click and hold it down and drag this off. This one, you can see this is an inside. Let me change the color. This is um, an offset cut to go on the outside. And I'll explain that to you more as we go. So I want to make this so that these aren't attached together anymore. I'm just gonna go right up here and hit ungroup. If you hover over it, you can see that it will show you what it's going to do. Ungroup means they're no longer grouped together and you can move them independently. So if you wanted to change 
any of these letters or placement. This is what's so amazing with Silhouette Studio is you can custom, like the things you can customize is unlimited. So you can cut it exactly like I have here, or if you want to ungroup it, maybe you wanted the D extra big, we'll ungroup again until they're all independently. I don't know why you would want an extra big D, but you can do it if you want. So I'm going to hit Command Z, which will take us to undo it. You can also go to edit and then undo edit. So if you ever make a mistake, you move something you don't want moved, um, that's a way to change it. This in here, you can also change the color. So let's say this heart, I want it um, blue or red. And you can lay out things on here visually before you cut them out to see if you like the way that looks. So let's go ahead and go over here to this little paint palette on the right side. This is our fill panel. And this will make it so that if whatever is selected, we can change the color. So maybe we want to change this to, that's really bright. <laughs> let's change it to a pink heart. And I'm actually going to select all, oops. I'm going to select all of these and regroup them so that they stick together. I can move them as a whole. Um, and you can put that over the top. And let's say I had white vinyl. I'm going to fill it in white. That's not white. That's white. And now you can see, OK, if I were to paint this heart pink and I had white vinyl, yeah, that looks cute. I like that. So I love this feature that you can fill in colors and really get a feel of what it's going to look like before you cut your materials so you're not wasting anything. OK, let's go back to our page setup. Actually, while we're in the color, because this will be cut separately, I know it's like red that'll show your cut lines, but I'm just going to fill it in to make it easier for us to see. I'll just fill it back in black. So I need to select it, and then we'll fill it in black. OK. Um, on our, let me show you this real quick. So you can see that black heart, that outline is this white right here. And then the letters are the gold. Okay, so we have this white is the outline and then the gold. So when I was showing it, this white is actually what I was coloring pink. Um, on the keychain we're gonna do, we're not actually going to do this outline. We're just going to do the letters. So I'm going to show you how to, we're going to pick that apart and we're going to customize because we can do whatever we want in the silhouettes. Okay, let's go back to sharing our screen. You guys are the best. Okay, here we go. So we're going to go back to our page setup. And because we are doing the keychain, I'm not going to cut this big one right now. Okay. We're going to do the keychain, and all you would need to do is measure the width of your keychain. And then right here, it has your measurements, and you can see exactly what size it is. If you are going to size it proportionally, you just drag from the corner. If you need to stretch it, then you'll go from one of those edges. Now I'm going to hit, I'm going to go back because I don't really want to stretch that heart. I've already done the work to get it the way I want it. Okay, so we're going to ungroup and take this outline away. And now we have just the words that we want to cut. Um, if you are cutting a couple of these, I'm going to group this back so we can put it together again. If you are going to cut a couple of these, um, we're going to set up our pad. When I cut vinyl, I like to do it without a mat. So cutting mat, we're going to put none. I know it's crazy. You don't even need a cutting mat for the vinyl. And this will show you now we have a new area that it has to stay within. So it has to stay within those red lines. If we can duplicate this, so you're going to go to edit, duplicate, or command D. Did you guys see the key hand shortcut? And now we can cut a whole, oops. Now we can cut a whole bunch of these. I'm just going to go, you guys, I didn't have it selected. Okay. We're going to duplicate this. 
And now we have a bunch. If you are to filling a whole page, this is a trick I love. Um, so we have, you can, I'm pressing down option on a Mac and just holding it down while I click and drag this down. But again, you can select whatever you need, edit, duplicate. But over here, we have the transform panel. This whole panel is all about getting things lined up and evenly spaced. So if I have them all weird and I need them in a line, I will come right up here and you can see it's going to line up everything right on that horizontal line. Okay. Um, let's say I have some like this and I want them evenly spaced apart. I can select all of these. I'm going to line them up together so they're all even. And then down here, you can see it's going to space them apart vertically. Okay. Yes, it's right over here on the right side, and it has three re rectangles with a line going through the middle. Are you seeing that? And this I love for aligning things. So like I said, um, we're going to select all of these, and then I want them centered, and I want those lined. And now, if I want this as one object, I can group those together. Let's get rid of these other ones for just a minute to show you this. Because I think this is helpful if you're cutting a bunch of things or if you're making your own polka dot pattern or a heart pattern. I know that's not what I show in the class, but this is a way you could do it. Okay, so now you have this and we're going to duplicate this one a couple times. And sometimes I'll do this to see like, can I fit four on a row or only three? And instead of moving everything one at a time, you just select it all and I'm like, okay divide this up space these evenly across and you can see they'll all fit nicely amy we have another question somebody yes. asked do you have to use a different blade for paper and vinyl i don't um i guess you could i do have a different blade for if i'm cutting like felt or fabric just like you have your fancy fabric scissors <laughs> that my mom used to yell at me when i was trying to cut paper and now i am the mom yelling at kids using those so I do mark um, my blades, like paper and vinyl, I just use together, but like I said, if it's fabric or something, or sometimes I'll cut like shrink plastic. So let's shrink plastic or, um, it's kind of like the plastic on this cutting mat, but I will mark that. Like if it's a thicker material or something that I'm like, it might wear down my blade, blade a little bit more, then I mark those. Um, Okay, we're not actually going to cut all this many. I just wanted to show you how to set this up. I've already got some cut for us. So I hope that helped you, gave you a little trick on um, setting things up. Also, I think just play around with that panel because it really helps you fit a ton in a small space, especially if you're using like little scraps and you don't want to waste anything. If you press this button right here, so we have to have that highlighted it'll center it to your page that you're cutting, okay? And this right here will center it to your cutting area. Let me show you how I would load the vinyl and then we're gonna transfer some onto a piece of the wooden keychain. Okay, so we'll go back over here to our silhouette. Let me get the right vinyl. <laughs> like I said, you don't need a cutting mat. Um, if you are using a tiny piece, you may want to but this is enough to go through. So I like to have, as long as it will um, go under your rollers, then you'll have that. Also make sure, so this was set up as a 12 by 12. So I need to make sure that my vinyl I'm sticking in is 12 inches wide. So whatever I set it up in my silhouette studio, that's what it needs to be. Okay, now I'm gonna move those out of the way. Um, when you are cutting vinyl without a roller, this is when you're gonna need this little tip. So you will undo this little lever and we're gonna push down this gray lock button that will help us slide this easily. Okay, and you want your rollers to be on your vinyl because it needs to grip something. So before when you were cutting paper on a mat, you needed your rollers along this edge, not on your paper. Well, there's no mat, right? So we need it to be on the vinyl. So when you have it there, we're just going to load this in. 
So now you're just gonna line it up with that edge again. Sorry, my hands are in the way of all of this. So you've got this gray edge right here. We've got it pressed up against our rollers and then you'll just load it like you did a cutting mat. Oops, I let it go a little bit. And look, you can undo if you need to. So if it loads in crooked, um, because you're doing a live Zoom class and your nerves are a little bit there, then you can always undo. Okay, so we're gonna hit the arrow and go forward. And now it's loaded it just where it needs to be to cut without a mat. The reason you can cut without a mat, I'm gonna undo this so I can show you. The reason you can cut without a mat is because when you select your cut settings, this vinyl is super thin um, and your paper is thick. So your paper back here acts like your cutting mat. And so when you select the vinyl settings, it's cutting just deep enough to cut through your vinyl and not your, back, your paper backing. Okay, so once we have that done, sorry, I'm like chucking things everywhere. <laughs> I am going to move my computer for a little bit. And we are going to just start making because that's the best part of all of this, right? So you can see this gold is what I used on these boxes right here, this gold vinyl. You can do white vinyl behind it, or if you have a low, um, a low tack transfer paper, you could try to do paper behind, but vinyl would be great. Or if you have a really steady hand, you can paint a white heart. Or actually you could use vinyl as a stencil to paint too. There's like so many different uses. Okay, so today we are going to talk about just putting the vinyl letters on, all right? I know I've just thrown a bunch of other ideas at you and confused you now. So I set a bunch of these up on, a, on my mat. Like when I cut these out at home, I had a whole bunch of these on. And instead of peeling off the vinyl on the whole sheet, I like to cut them apart so that I'm working with smaller areas. Because when you start to peel this off, um, see what I'm doing here. When you start to peel this off, if you're peeling over a huge surface, then you have all of this extra vinyl. This is, sorry, we got this thin little line that I need to hold with my thumb. So you got all this extra, which is manageable on the small piece. But if you've got like a huge thing you're undoing with all these tiny pieces, then this starts to stick to the rest of your thing and will lift up your letters and all of that. So it'll start to stick to other parts and kind of pull up, like maybe it'll pull up your A's and stuff like that. So I like to cut, work in a small area. That's the special way you get rid of those. <laughs> Amy, what kind of vinyl are you using? So this vinyl is from Silhouette. It's the one they partnered with Oracle on. So I think it's just in a sampler pack. Um, because this is just a little project, I'm not too worried about if it's like a permanent or, I'm not too worried about my quality of vinyl because like this is a kid project, vinyl. They're gonna get it gross in a minute anyway. So I just went through and used whatever scraps I had. Um, okay, we're gonna do the keychain. So that's what I had for the gold and we'll just put it on. I'm gonna show you the process on here. Here's my little tiny keychain ones. So you can see as you lift them up that if there was a big section that this would be a pain to work with if there was a whole bunch. Okay, so we're gonna take our transfer paper. It's kind of like masking tape. So you'll separate it. Um, because we have a small, a small area I'm working with, then I can just separate it and place it like this. If this was a larger project, uh, is this box in the way? Let me move that. Um, if this was a larger project, then I would probably do something like this where I would fold back just the top edge, okay? And then I would place it down right here. And I would kind of peel this away. Can you see? And then I would peel this away as I move down. Now I have this little scraper spatula tool. This is great for if you're cutting like a bunch of little polka dots or um, anything that you have tiny pieces. 
go like this and it will scrape off all those tiny pieces off your mat. But it is also great for vinyl. So we're gonna go like this and this masking tape is going to stick to the top of our vinyl. Okay, and then when we peel it off, you can see now it is releasing from the back of the vinyl and it's on your transfer paper. Can you imagine what a pain it would be <laughs> if you had to place all of these letters individually on your little box to get it just right? So this transfer paper makes it so you don't have to do that. Um, and then you'll just take your surface. Actually, let's do it on this cup. That'd be fun, huh? Why not? Do you think we could? Nope, we're just gonna do it right on the mug. Um, we don't wanna do it on top of that already. So we are going to place it right on here and I'm gonna start in the middle. When I'm doing something round, I like to start in the middle. Do you like to start in the middle, McKenna? What's your preferred? You guys out there, where do you like to start if you're doing something on a cup? Let's get all the tips out there because I know we love to vinyl cups, right? So you'll see that I am just going like this. I'm smoothing out the bubbles and I, the better you can get this to stick on here now, I've got, I've got the whole table shaking, really working on this. Um, the better you press this onto the cup, then the easier it is when you go to lift your vinyl off, okay? So you can see that it's sticking right to that cup. And how cute will this be when you fill it with like a fun punch or some a, a cute color? Water's cute too, but I can see a cute color drink in there would be so fun. So that same thing you do right here is exactly what I did on the keychains. I did it on the front of this box. You can do, when I was at Michael's, I saw these cute square, um, just like raw wood, just these little square plaques. And this would be cute on there. Maybe you make like, it's the birthday, a birthday, happy birthday or something for the little, for your little birthday buddy. Um, okay, and then the next thing, that we had, we have these paper hats. And let's go ahead, should we cut one of those? Or you know what, let's go to this one real quick. How are we on time? Oh, we got just a minute. Let's go ahead and do this heart. So I'm gonna show you this heart because this hat is pretty self-explanatory to put together. But this heart can be a little bit tricky because how do we get this to this, <laughs> right? Um, this is one of my favorite designs. When you cut it, it'll cut out these big scallops, but then you can see it also has this perforated edge, cuts out all these little dashed lines. And we are going to glue that to this side and make almost like a tube, okay? So that's gonna be our first step. I'm going to use this glue and we don't need a ton. I'm also gonna make sure I'm getting right along this edge more than this edge, because this is the one that's gonna meet up right here that you're gonna see, okay? That might make more sense as you make your own. Sometimes it takes making things to like, understand what the heck I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, so we've got that glued together and just gonna pinch that. So now we have this little tube and we are going to glue one side together. See how that looks at the top? We're gonna to glue those together. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm just using a little bit of glue. Okay. And I have these little binder clips that sometimes if I'm making 3D things, I will use these to help me clamp and hold it till the glue dries, especially because this is a small heart and you can see like it's pretty full. These edges are holding on to like a lot of, not weight because it's full of air, but I mean, they're trying to clamp in two different directions in a, in a small area. If you've got a bigger heart, then it um, will glue together easier. Okay, so when you have half of it like this, then you will open it, you'll fill it with candy or whatever your little treat is. 
And instead of gluing it flat like an envelope, we're now going to pitch it the other way. And you can see that we have a heart this way. Looks like a heart, but then it also looks like a heart this way. So no matter what way you hold the box, it looks like a heart. Okay, so now we're gonna glue that. Remember, we've filled it with candy. And then we'll just pinch those closed. You can use these over here. And then when they wanna open it, they can just rip it open. And actually, I'm thinking, wouldn't it be fun if you cut a bigger heart too? Sorry, as I'm creating, I'm always like, oh, another idea. Um, I think it could be cut fun to cut a larger heart and almost like those Russian ne nesting dolls. Like if you just had these nesting inside of each other, that could be really fun. If somebody does that, please show me. Um, so there's your little heart box. And then those will be great at your table. These little animals, are these not the cutest? So when I was at Michael's looking for this party stuff, have you guys been, I know we're all crafters and we've been down the paper and the vinyl and all of those goody aisles, but my kids led me to this aisle. Have you guys been to where they have like the animals and stuff like that? Oh my gosh, they have the cutest ones. Some are big like this. My kids did not want to leave that area, but we found a tube of little animals and they have all different sizes and the detail on them. I'm telling you, if you have an animal lover, you don't need a toy store. You need to go to Michael's and go in their little animal section because they are too cute. Look at that little tiger. I know he's adorable. Um, so we just grabbed some animals. You could also grab some stuffed animals from your house to put them on the table. Um, one of my friends here at Silhouette was sharing that she uses wrapping paper as the tablecloth sometimes, or if it's not wide enough for your tablecloth, uh, maybe you just have the cheap plastic tablecloth underneath, and then that can be like your center runner. Also, I've seen those, um, what are they called? Bulletin board backdrops at Michael's, like the rolls of paper. Those are also really great for parties for a tablecloth. Um, you can use your silhouette. I've done where I've put like hearts. So I did, I cut out of just white sticker paper. I just cut a bunch of hearts and they were white hearts and I placed them all over the tablecloth. Or you can do, um, you can just have kids color on. You can cut out things out of vinyl, maybe outlines of hearts and they've got to color it in. There's just so many different things you can do because the silhouette is full of like thousands and thousands and thousands of designs. And like I showed you, they can be personalized. You can add names, you can change the colors depending on your materials. You can, you could do this whole exact same thing again. I mean, maybe minus the hearts, but change it to a shamrock or change it to birthday balloons. And you've got like a different party, right? Change the paper and you can do this like Easter's in a month. So maybe you want Easter paper all the same stuff for Easter. Instead of hearts, just grab an egg die cut out of the store. So I love Silhouette and the, the flexibility I have to customize and really make things my own. Sometimes I walk down the store and I'm like, oh, this isn't quite what I had in mind. But like, it doesn't matter, I can make it. <laughs> so just a few basic supplies and you can make whatever you want. Hey, do you guys have any questions for me? Anything in there? So someone was wondering about the weeding for the um, hearts for the vinyl. Can you just show maybe real quick how you would do that? Oh, yes, of course. Thank you for asking, because you know what? I bet somebody else has that same question. I was always the kid in class that didn't dare to ask because I thought everybody else knew. But it turns out when you get old, you're like, oh, nobody knew, right? <laughs> Okay, let's move our little animals out of the way. And let's do this. So there's this little weeding hook. You guys see, it, does it remind you of a dentist? <laughs> you can clean your teeth after you've weeded your vinyl. Um, totally kidding, don't do that. Also, if you don't have a weeding hook, uh, just like a regular straight pin will work too. And all I do is I'm stabbing into an area that I'm pulling away. So. I'm just gonna pull, stab into one of these areas where I'm pulling away. And sometimes when you have tiny letters, like there's some really small letters in here. 
So I might need to use my finger and kind of hold them as I'm lifting. Also, as you can see, I'm lifting this way, but the U is in here. So as I'm pulling, I will just use my hook to lift that up. And now I can keep pulling. Does that answer your question? Does that help? Um, I have seen some people will have like um, a light box. I got a light box when I was little to trace stuff. <laughs> and sometimes if you're doing white, because let me show you white. White's kind of hard to see. And sometimes you can see the tracing lines on there. So just like a light box that you would use to trace with, you can use that. Maybe shine a flashlight under or just hold it at a different angle. Um, then you can see. I found that white's kind of hard to see, but some of these others, black also, but like this metallic gold, and I don't know how it's picking up on the camera, but with your eyes, your naked eyes, then you can see it pretty well. Also, you could, if you wanted to, um, you can use the reverse of the vinyl, okay? So instead of pulling out the gold, I could pull out these letters. And so when I put it on, like if I was putting it on this green edge right here, then it would have gold and the green paint would shine through as the letters. So you can use the reverse of it too, which is really great. Okay, is there anything else? We good? Okay, um, if you have more questions, you guys, I am at amyrobison.com. Instagram, I'm AB Robison Design. I would love to see you over there. I'm happy to ask any questions. Also, there's very knowledgeable people on Silhouette's Instagram and Michael's, I'm sure. So um, I love doing party packs. I have a monthly party pack that I send out once a month for families to, they can print it. If you don't have a Silhouette, you can just print and cut with your scissors. There's also cut files in there. And just show how to use these fun, simple blank products at Michael's and turn them into a fun party with your family because I feel like right now things can feel a little crazy and when we can get together and show our family our love and just focus on our kiddos or those that are close to us and just give a little extra attention and love and brighten their days and it brightens mine because I I'm pretty sure this is my love language. This is how I love to show those around me that I care about them um, I love to create. It makes me so happy. I spend a little bit of time every day, sometimes hours into the night, and I just create, and that's how I like renew myself and can take charge of the next day. Holidays are fun. Valentine's is fun because I feel like sometimes Christmas can be a little hectic. I don't know. Does it been hectic for any of you? Um, and I feel like Valentine's is your catch up. Like, oh, I didn't get my Christmas cards out. I guess we could send Valentine's to neighbors or uh, we could drop off a little Valentine treat or just that little extra something as we come out of winter and it's like, blah, we've out of Christmas. We can use our creative skills to make people smile. And I love that. I love bringing joy to people through creating for them and making them feel special. So thank you guys so much for joining us today. Head to Michael's, grab yourselves some cute boxes and the Silhouette Design Store, and you can download any designs, and you can make this party. Um, if you'll remember those, I think McKenna wrote them in there, so don't forget to grab your free files this week that you can make these, but also shop around. There's a lot of fun stuff in there, and I know you creative people can make awesome things. So thank you. Have a wonderful day.